Good morning, uh, good afternoon, uh, and good evening for anyone that watching in that time zone. Uh, welcome to the uh, uh, Sacred Rhythm Reborn Unison Homecoming uh, Intercultural Dialogue number four. Uh, so we have come a long way um, up to today. Uh, and also we uh, welcome everyone who have joined us only uh, today uh, that uh, the event has been going on for uh, nearly a month. Uh, tomorrow will be exactly one month from the very beginning uh, in December 2020. Uh, so we have presented uh, diverse uh, musical traditions uh, uh, from around the world uh, and also involving many uh, speakers in the intercultural dialogue from many disciplines uh, uh, throughout the event. Uh, so last night, uh, we just had uh, Baluji Srivastav, uh, our dear friend uh, from London uh, uh, by India, who also uh, contributed to very beautiful performance. Uh, uh, presenting uh, some ragas, uh, with uh, several different instruments, with sitar, and also with uh, the ruba, uh, and was followed by a traditional uh, string ensemble from Jakarta, uh, from the Betawi culture. So if you missed the show, uh, it's on YouTube, and you can always uh, see it anytime at, at your convenience with your very nice cup of tea. Uh, and you know, don't forget to share it with your family because last night was beautiful. And of course, the other performances too, if you miss it, you can always uh, visit uh, the YouTube channel. Uh, and for today, uh, this is uh, the fourth uh, dialogue uh, in the whole program. Uh, and we have very little preparation for this one, uh, but I'm very happy that uh, everyone uh, that uh, we invited uh, are all here today with us. Uh, so the beginning of this uh, uh, talk, uh, I remember uh, that uh, we chose the topic, the post-truth world, uh, which is you know, the, the era that we're living now, right? With the amount of information uh, that we receive through social media, internet, you know, and you know, uh, we are overwhelmed with it sometimes, and we don't know which one is right, which one is wrong uh, to choose from, and that's become one of the challenges that we are facing today. Uh, and along the way, we have discussion, have discussion um, with Graham and Francois, uh, and ended up it was just only Graham that are actually uh, agreeing in taking part in you know under that topic. Uh, and the others uh, aren't able to join. So then obviously uh, the concept has slightly changed. Yeah, although um, we're still, uh, we'll be discussing under the domain of uh, technology, of course, the dig digital age. Yeah, so uh, we've agreed to finally choose the topic, uh, the artistic collaboration in the digital age uh, for today. So the age of information uh, technology creates uh, new solutions, as we know, um, while similarly also creating uh, new emerging problems. Uh, you know, our analysis of the problems, you know, today in contemporary society, we must deal with, in particular, the fragmentation of social relations and also social isolation, right? Uh, uh, you know, exacerbated by the massive increases, you know, in social media interaction also and its power to replace our intersubjective interaction, uh, meaning, understanding and love uh, with surrogates, you know, which impoverish rather than uh, enrich our social resilience and interconnectedness. Uh, so one of the main questions that uh, uh, myself and the team also have concern about is how can we empower communities, you know, to tackle the very issues that arose from technological advancement. Uh, and myself, uh, uh, 
not very good with technology. <laughs> you know, I'm a musician and I play the guitar. Uh, and so in, in order to answer all these uh, uh, complicated uh, issues that we face today, especially dealing with technologies, and I believe it is not, it is almost impossible not to invite addictive TV to be part of creating uh, this solution. Um, so welcome Addictive TV uh, to the dialogue. Um, so Addictive TV is a British artist uh, collective for known uh, for their innovative use of audio and visual sampling and their AV shows. Uh, their global music project uh, is known uh, Orchestral Sample, yeah, described by the Times as uh, ingenious and compelling. Um, digitally brings together over 250 musicians. They film around the world over the last decade, uh, sampling them all to create new work, you know, of extraordinary fusions. Uh, Addictive TV will give an insight today into their work, uh, which explore new forms of collaboration with uh, all those musicians uh, who collectively play an enormous range of uh, instruments. So welcome all uh, today. Uh, so we have, uh, the founders, the creators of uh, Addictive TV, Orchestra of Samples, uh, Graham Daniels and Francois Lemmy. Welcome, and also we have the members of the collective today with us, uh, with us, Alejandro de Palera, Alex. Uh, welcome, and also Hi. Michael, Neo and Stephen Hollands, also the member of the collective, welcome. And someone who's uh, also very known in the Indonesian music community, who also has taken part in the project, uh, Gondrong Gungunarto. Welcome from Solo. <laughs> okay, um, so I think uh, we have uh, prepared some kind of a rundown for today, but uh, you know, it's best for us to keep it flexible, uh, of course. And for some of you who haven't heard you know, about Orchestra of Samples or Addictive TV Project, uh, Graham will uh, start with uh, some slides and uh, a brief introduction about uh, what it's all about. So I'll uh, pass it on to Graham. Thank you. Unless you want to say anything, Francois? No, that's all right. I'll, I'll join in when the time is right. <laughs> okay. Ah, happy to me. I mean, even though technology is a massive part of kind of what we do, personally sometimes I really hate technology and I think I would rather go and live on a farm digging turnips I think and potatoes I mean it's um, yeah technology is just it's just part of kind of what we do uh, almost by default Ooh, someone else just joined hold on let them in uh, technology is very much part of what we do by um, you know by the sheer sort of idea you know by default of, of what it is that we do I mean, in, in, a, in a digital age of collaboration, we've been wanting and have been collaborating with a lot of people for a long time. And something like orchestra samples, actually, sorry, hello, I'm Graham. Uh, I'm, uh, I, I had addictive TV. And uh, we're known for kind of doing AV sampling. We would, uh, I mean, we have a history of kind of sampling movies uh, and making and uh, mashups and doing kind of live shows that were based on kind of taking clips from films putting them together and making music from the sounds that you see in a film. And having toured uh, in a lot of countries many, many years ago while doing, uh, doing this project, we wanted to kind of um, collaborate more because we just felt very kind of uh, isolated in, even back then in the sense of just flying in somewhere, doing a show, uh, flying back out and that was it. And we were never really meeting people. And, uh, and it was Francois uh, who originally kind of um, uh, floated the idea of, uh, of just saying, you know, everywhere we're traveling, why did, oh, sorry, someone asked me something? No, uh, floated the idea of saying, while we're traveling, why don't we stay an extra day, uh, an extra two days, and, and meet up with lots and lots of musicians and record them. And that's where the idea of orchestra of samples comes from. The idea being is that we would slowly, slowly build up uh, an archive uh, of musicians playing traditional, newly invented, just very, very kind of different localized instruments all around the world. And the idea being is to break down cultural barriers and introduce people to uh, instruments they wouldn't have seen before or know of. And uh, many people, I'm sure they would say, oh, you know, 
that type of music, like Indonesian music, everyone knows maybe of a gamelan, but people might say, oh, you know, it's not my style of music or I'm not interested in, I know, Indian music or something. And the whole idea of, of, of orchestra samples is more like a gateway <laughs> sort of project where people, you know, they can watch and listen to the music and it's, it's all created from sampling uh, bits of this archive. And, um, and in fact, I'll show you. Uh, in fact, I mean, this is just like an uh, example of these are uh, all the musicians, uh, many of the musicians that we've recorded so far. And in fact, down there is, if you know, you can see the mouse, he's Gong Gong, he's down there, uh, who's in a track. I mean, this is uh, a slide of, of, of what a track often generally looks like. And in that, you've got somebody playing a rebab in the middle that we recorded in Morocco uh, a, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, someone on the top left. Uh, Lewis uh, in uh, in Cartagena in Colombia, and uh, and then a singer in India, uh, someone from Senegal, and I mean this this is a good example. This was last year. Uh, we haven't sampled uh, this fully into a track yet, but this um, uh, this is someone in uh, in um, Tamil Nadu, in India, uh, pretty shiny, uh, playing the veena there. Uh, this is uh, in Senegal. Uh, this is that's a bass balalaika. They were in, in Poland. Uh, in fact, there is the the shop where uh, yeah. And um, Morph had the wonderful job of <laughs> of recording the audio on that. And uh, yeah, uh, and in fact, I remember when we were doing that. Me and Morph were doing a gig in Morocco, and uh, and um, Sebti on the left there, who uh, who we know. Uh, was working on the festival and uh, and we spent the day just sort of going to, to Tiznit to a, a town south of Agadir where we were performing and we didn't know that secretly he'd, he'd organized uh, this uh, this session for us and we didn't even know it was just luck that I'd taken the camera because I thought oh I'll, you know take some photos and we always keep the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the recorder with us and the camera and everything together and then by chance uh, he said oh I've organized uh, there to, uh, to record so I said, Oh, I thought it was Alex already starting some harmonics on that uh, fretless <laughs> guitar. Alex is joining in. And, uh, Technology and, is, is, is yeah. uh, proving to be, um, you know, always, always there, isn't it? <laughs> it's all, uh, keep yeah. us connected. And this, in fact, uh, this image was uh, uh, Nur Handayani in, uh, in Indonesia. This is in... Uh, solo uh, in Surakarta and we were working with the project this was last year with the British Council and while we were there we took the opportunity of recording uh, a number of musicians including Gongo mm. and, uh, and many of you I'm sure in Indonesia must know uh, this instrument uh, the Anklung of which uh, uh, th this is a very sort of modernized updated uh, Anklung where he'd taken uh, because the, the, anklungs, you know, you normally you hold them and you shape them, whereas he'd built them into a frame where you could play them a bit more like a piano. And so you can see where his hands are, he would hit the keys and he would have to shake it and uh, the whole anklung would shake. And again, we haven't sampled that yet. It's quite recent. I mean, the idea essentially behind orchestra samples is that while having this, this large archive, you know, you're finding it's a, the matches, you're finding the, uh, the samples that fit together. So it's a bit like doing a jigsaw puzzle uh, but you don't have the picture of what it is that you're making. And so, uh, you know, we would sit there and just listen to, to thousands of these samples and just see which match because everybody is improvising. Uh, and so the, the music doesn't exist beforehand. A lot of people, they see clips and they say, or they see the show and they say, oh, surely, you know, they must have been listening to the music. And you say, no, no, there were, the music didn't exist beforehand. People just improvise and then we're sitting there and finding, you know, the bits that match. I, mean, I don't know if uh, Michael or Morph, either of you want to jump in and add anything about that wonderful process? It is indeed a wonderful process. <laughs> I like the, uh, I always think of it as the sculptor who like reveals the sculpture within the, uh, within the stone. Um, only That's in this a good case, way of looking at it. Yeah, in this case, we've got say 10, 20, 30 stones and we kind of just chip away and eventually something will come up um but yeah it's very um i like that you know it, it's very important to to really um you know 
um, make this clear that the music wasn't there. <laughs> Nothing was there beforehand. It's all drawn out of these improvised performances. Yeah. yeah. And it's a very organic uh, project in the sense that it didn't start day one with, with some funding. We were simply doing it off our own back, uh, slowly while traveling and doing shows and, and performing abroad. Uh, we would meet up with, uh, with musicians who were like-minded, liked the idea of the project. Some recording sessions were 10 minutes, others were half an hour, an hour. Sometimes if someone's got time, they're happy to give half a day. And so we end up with lots and lots and lots of samples. And, uh, and so, yeah, there, when you see a show, sometimes there are people that appear, one, you know, sort of just once, and there are some people that appear two or three times in different tracks. And, um, and also, Graham, we should mention that all the, the uh, recording sessions are documented on the website. So, so to find out more about all the musicians that we filmed, uh, the instruments they play, it's all on the website, on the, under the blog, sessions, uh, blog section. Yeah, it's like a, um, it's almost like an encyclopedia. <laughs> if you yeah. just go to the blog on, on yeah, orchestraofsamples.com, it's, there are pages and pages and pages and pages of, of all of the musicians and everybody who's taken part in that sense and, uh, and links to their, their websites and more about their instruments so people can, can find out more. In fact, uh, uh, yeah. sorry, yeah? Make it go, Michael. Oh, no, I don't think Michael was speaking. Ah, okay. No, yes, that's, uh, one of the things that is very interesting is because it's a really like some of the, um, of the samples are really made from traditional, very traditional uh, themes yes. with a very traditional instruments that, that normally you will never see in your lifetime because you won't, you won't travel at that, this particular town and you, you won't be able to see this particular musician that maybe plays only in traditional places. Yes. So that's why it's, it's really interesting to have this I blog. Think that's often so, why a lot of musicians are interested in being part of the project, because it takes their instrument somewhere else. It allows it to go to kind of a wider audience outside of, as Alex says, just those sort of traditional circles. I mean, um, with Gong Gong uh, here, again, we explained what we were doing. I'm not sure that, <laughs> that you fully understood the whole idea of what we were doing. But in fact, I'll show you a, a little clip of uh, of what me and Morph uh, Stephen uh, did with uh, yeah, that'd be great for yeah. people to see it. I think. And uh, yeah, I mean that that we were just stunned at the fact that that the the kachapi, uh, the red kind of stringed instrument he's playing there on his lap, that it fitted beautifully with uh, an instrument called a nadaswaram that we recorded in Tamil Nadu in India, which is often only used in religious ceremonies. But uh, this um, musician we were introduced to, Party Man, he uh, he kind of plays it in a very contemporary style. I mean, he also does a lot of religious ceremonies and weddings and things like that, but he's kind of treating it far more like, um, I guess almost like a cross between like a sax and a, and a clarinet in that kind of sense. And doing, uh, he's been on TV on, on a kind of version of like India's Got Talent uh, type show. And uh, it's just incredible the way he plays it. And we just found that, that, that it fitted beautifully with, uh, with the Kachapi and so sampled it. And um, I don't know if Morph wants to jump in here and explain how it fried his brain. <laughs> As you can imagine, there's something that, that, that Alex has touched on there. You, you know, there's there's some very um, international um, flavours that come into all of this that have their own unique uh, timbres and scales often, and it's very difficult to try and marry those together. And, and as Michael says, you, you just have to chip away at little bits of it until you find little pieces that kind of fit together in a little jigsaw. Um, but it, it's worth the struggle. <laughs> it is. I think you just end up with really beautiful kind of results that you wouldn't normally ever end up with in a more conventional uh, music writing uh, method. 
if that makes sense. And you know, you, yeah. you, you wouldn't sit there and go, mm, I think that'd be really good to have a kachapi and a, and a nadaswaram and, and put them together. I mean, e I mean, even if you did, finding the people who play those instruments in the same place would then become very, very difficult. And, uh, and so it would then become very expensive to start traveling the world, and which obviously you can't do at the moment anyway. And so um, that, that, that's the beauty of it, is that digitally, it's kind of bringing people together in a way that is even more so. It's like post-digital, because in many ways, they're not even there. You know, we've recorded them and they just become part of this sort of digital archive that we're dipping into. And um, since lockdown, in fact, we've been doing everything online in that sense. I mean, these are shots where here's me and Morph uh, working on a track. In fact, I think this is from the other day that we were working on something. Uh, there's me and Michael, uh, yeah. And this, I think, what track is that? I can't quite see. But, um, story, but, the story of our lives in two pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'll show, play you another clip of, this is a track again with uh, sampling uh, uh, an Indonesian artist, uh, Nur Handayani, who's a singer. And, uh, and we found that she fitted beautifully with this. I mean that that track in itself is uh, <laughs> that, that, that that was kind of brain frying definitely you know lo looking for kind of things that, that all fitted together and that's a mixture of uh, flute in India uh, guitar uh, in France uh, there's a, a, a two stringed instrument called a dombra that we recorded in Kazakhstan mm -hmm. uh, and just just beautifully all, all fitted together and in fact there's a very short clip of the say it's a, a different part of the track but i just wanted to show a different part sorry that's that. sorry, not that track In that that guitar loop we'd recorded oh nearly 10 years ago now no no i think it is yeah 10 years ago it was part of the first session we did uh, at a residency uh, francois had organized in france and uh, i just always thought that loop was beautiful and over the years we just never really found anything it fitted with uh, until we found that it fitted with nurse singing uh, within weeks of after coming back from indonesia uh, and found that it, that it worked and um and so yeah sat there for many hours and hours and hours and uh yeah and Graham was very excited that we were able <laughs> to do something with that loop he was very excited <laughs> just <laughs> sitting there in years <laughs> done it <laughs> finally <laughs> yeah but we take yeah and we take the show out on the road uh that's at the key Bronley museum in uh, in paris that's at womad uh the milton Keynes international festival uh that's dame evelyn glenny who believe it or not she's a profoundly deaf percussionist and she feels the music through vibrations so she plays with bare feet and she can feel the vibrations absolutely fantastic person to work with uh dennis rollins mbe amazing trombonist and in fact a uh, good example that's uh, uh, the instrument in the background is the sampled instrument and that's a viola from uh, from the south sea islands where you, it's stringed and you play it kind of uh, like that or with a bow. And uh, that's Remy Stengel, who, uh, again, amazing kind of uh, artist and composer. Uh, this was a, that's actually, a, in case people don't know, that's not a cello, that's a bass, uh, a bass viol. So it's five strings, not uh, not four. Uh, it has a very, but very- I just to mention, Graham, that as well, um, during the gigs, we invite local musicians. So, so we we'll yeah. often have guest performers. Depending Sorry, on where go. we go. I should have said that. Sorry. Go for it, Francois. 
Yeah, so so sometimes you we we go back to the countries where we have organized filming sessions. So you would have the musicians playing on the screen, and we could invite them to come and play with us uh, on with Goyam and uh, and Alex on stage. So it's a real interaction between what's happening on the screen, what's happening on stage, uh, to create unique per, uh, experiences. Yeah, it's, it's kind really, of just yeah. different. Sorry, Alex, it, go for it. That's, it's going back and forth through digital and an organic world all the time yeah. in fact very much so that's that's the beauty of it i think because uh, we live in a world where some people would just want to be organic organic food organic life organic etc and some people just would don't want to just to be digital 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 you know so it's kind of interesting to have uh, that kind of interaction in between uh, the digital world with yeah, the organic world because we, we live at the end in the same planet at the same time so <laughs> mm. <laughs> can, I, some kind of compromise. <laughs> can i ask a, a, a question yeah uh what are the most interesting thing i think with uh, addictive tv is uh, as already mentioned you know um, you know it's, it was like a puzzle you know uh, um and it's very uh, related to you know the reborn unison obviously here you know we uh, try to bridge uh, cultural expressions as mentioned earlier you know among the traditional modern you know and also contemporary communities uh, and try to kind of make sense you know of uh, from all these three uh, very diverse uh, uh, cultures um, and of course here we have Uh, Michael, you know, who is also, you know, a musician, uh, and he's also a 3D specialist, right? Uh, 3D sound specialist. Yeah. Uh, As in not 3, 3D animation. 3D, 3D sound. sound. Yeah. And Stephen's also, you know, he's a producer, you know, a DJ also, uh, and Alex is a, is a guitarist, and Gondrong is also a musician. So I'm wondering, in the process, um, you know, obviously. From all the materials that Graham collected, um, you know, it uh, forms a new uh, composition out of it, right? So I'm wondering, from from the musician perspective, uh, what what do you think about the end result, you know, of uh, uh, the compilations, you know, from all the sources that has been gathered and is becoming a new form? So, well, you know, sometimes you know, as a musician, you have your own sort of, oh. You know, I think the music should be like this, uh, or should be, you know, it should be 16 beat rather than eight beat. Uh, uh, so I'm wondering if perhaps maybe you could start with with Michael, maybe to to respond from the musician point of view. You know, uh. um, <clears throat> I'd also like to address because this also addresses the question that someone put in the chat about uh, giving direction to musicians. Oh, I haven't uh, seen that. I can't uh, see chat. A question uh, which says, do you give brief ideas to musicians while recording? Yes. It's hard to imagine combining different scales, tempo without a guide, etc. Um, personally, I've never been present for any of, I've only been present for like one session of recordings. <laughs> uh, but obviously, because I have access to, <laughs> to, the, uh, to the archive, I can see those little bits. And the only instructions that Graham ever gives people is to do with like sustained notes or like little short bits, but usually he'll let them just play and he'll pick up on like a little phrase that they'll play and go, Oh, that sounds really nice. Can you just play more of that for a bit? Um, and then from our, then, then when we get the, 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 the recordings, we just, the, the samples tell us what to do really. Mm. So, Like I've I've noticed, for example, in in some of the samples that we've been, um, you know, examining whether they work or whatever. There's most people seem to play in like a, a tempo between 100 and 120 BPM, but that's just like a natural thing. So it's not it's not us imposing that tempo. Mm -hmm. We we draw out the tempo from 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 the samples, and then we'll draw out sort of uh, scales and harmonic relations. Obviously it is difficult to marry different scales, but every once in a while you'll, you'll have an overlap. And really our, our 
um, our job, <laughs> our task is really to find those areas where there is overlap so <laughs> that there'll be, say, a phrase that's about 30 seconds long. And within that phrase, there'll be about 10 seconds that mm -hmm. overlaps with another phrase, with another instrument that's also about, like, say, a minute long. So then we'll take those two phrases and put them together. And then we'll find another phrase from a third instrument that also overlaps a little bit with those. And they, <clears throat> the, the harmonic relations then are really drawn out of any overlapping uh, moments from different instruments. So it's a very, it's a very organic mm. bottom up kind of relationship. Like we, we I, I don't think there's any, it's very, like we, we I, I don't think we've, in the tracks that I've worked on, we've never done a top-down mm. thing. We'll try to fit things in in a prescribed way or mm. in a pre-idea. Like all the ideas are drawn out from what people are playing. Mm. Uh, yeah, I should say that we've always said that the samples lead where they want to go. Yeah. I mean, all the tracks. So, so we, I mean, we never sort of go right. Let's do a dance track that's like 135 BPM. I mean, it simply doesn't work like that. You have to just look for the samples and go, oh, this fits with that. And then you go, okay, so the track will be this tempo because you're being led by the samples that you find. And I should add actually that with musicians generally that we've recorded, it, it's, 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 they have to have a lot of trust. And I think that, that for many musicians who are often very used to being in control of, of their music. And as you say, oh, I want it to be 16 bars. I want it to be whatever. That, that they had to, to record something and just let it go <laughs> and give it away. They have to have a lot of trust. And that's why I feel very humbled that a lot of musicians put their trust in, in what it is that we're doing. And they're always very amazed at the results where they say, wow, was that me playing that? I mean, a good example, I'll let more explain, but, but when we made the track with Gong Gong, and uh, we sent it to a party band who's playing the uh, Nada Swaram. Uh, he didn't speak English. And when we were recording it, we had to work with somebody who spoke uh, Tamil uh, and English. And he didn't quite get And we sent him an MP3 and he didn't quite understand what it was. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, it's somebody playing the Nada Swaram. Very, very nice. You know, and we said, no, 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 it's, it's you. <laughs> and <laughs> he didn't realize it wasn't it more if your, your neighbor was Tamil. My next door neighbour happens to be Tamil, thankfully, so he, I was able to describe the situation to him. He would write it down in Tamil, and, <laughs> and then I'd scanned it and then sent it to Graham so he could forward it on. <laughs> Eventually, the, we all came to an understanding, and <laughs> that he was, he was quite surprised in the end that, you know, it, it, that was him playing in the track. <laughs> yeah, he did, right. and a lot of musicians, they don't realise unless obviously they see the video, they don't realize it's them because the way that it's cut and blended. It's, um, mm. That's interesting. Okay. There's always a surprise element then in the outcome yes. of every yes. project. Very much so, yes. Yeah. But to answer, I didn't see the live chat actually, but to, uh, to add to what Michael said, yeah, in general, um, when in all the recording sessions, we, there is no predefined key. We let people improvise completely because what they want to do, because obviously some instruments say like uh, the hang drum, you know, they're in fixed keys. And so we just let people improvise however they want. And, uh, and sometimes we say, do something, you know, more down tempo, do something a bit faster. You know, I just, mm -hmm. we, we just capture a range. And as Michael said, you know, when any of us hear something, you go, oh, that bit that went, you know, I can see that working with, you know, and mm. I've got nearly all of the samples kind of in my head and, and I can remember and sort of go, oh, that guy we filmed on the trumpet like four years ago, that would work well with what we're recording. And, and invariably it's wrong and doesn't work out. But it's uh, it? yeah. Alex, you're phoning what, again. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, but what is very interesting about that project is that as a musician, when you improvise on top of it, it's like you never expect what is going to come. You, you, you can't tell in what will happen in within 10 seconds or something. Mm. And this, this for me is very interesting because normally I'm, I'm not bored, but I'm used to some stuff of music and, and you know, you feel the, the beat is coming out there and there will be a stop there. And, the, and the, where the, the thing I like with this project is sometimes you don't have to count like normal bars, etc. You have to listen to the sample, see the, the sentence of the samples end and you know that it's the next um, sentence that will start over. 
So it's very different um, in the way you have to crawl through the track when you're improvising uh, uh, on top of it. You really don't rely on your natural um, habits, you know, uh, mm-hmm. what you used to do uh, in normal music. And that's yeah. why I really like this, uh, this project, I think. And plus, I think it's very, you go into the intimacy of the, of the musicians that have been recorded. And because you see them, um, everything counts. The clothes, the, the way they look, uh, everything. It's, it's very different that when you mix only like with audio. You have uh, guys uh, behind the, 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 the audio, you know, the, uh, that's, 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 that's is very interesting, I think. Mm. And it's, yeah, we've I often think... Had, we've often had after gigs sometimes, that uh, we've went, especially when it's a large festival, we've, had, uh, we've seen parents who've taken their children to the shows tweeting afterwards saying that they really enjoyed the musical education and that, that their <laughs> children can see kind of instruments from around the world. But no, while Alex was talking, I thought it's a good, good chance to uh, show. In fact, uh, this is a good example of doing something, uh, collaborating uh, digitally online. It, this was the very first lockdown. So this was just over or uh, under a year ago that uh, when suddenly everybody was locked down around the world, the pandemic was taking hold and everybody was DJing and putting their DJ sets online. Uh, we thought it'd be really good to try and do some kind of mini orchestra of samples performance. So Alex was in Paris and I was in London and we set up and we did rehearsals over Zoom. And, and, uh, and, and anyway, this will show you a tiny little clip. It's on YouTube if anyone wants to see it, but uh, this is a little clip. Oh, I've noticed uh, that Peter from InterVision Yeah, in fact, that the, the rebab in the middle was the one that you saw earlier where me and Morph uh, were in uh, the desert in Morocco recording. Mm. And uh, yeah, no, all hats off to Michael, I say on that. When, when we were making that track, we were thinking it's got to be because the rebab is, is quite a difficult uh, instrument we found to mm. find a really good kind of riff. And we were going through listening and then what about this one? What about this one? What about this one? What about this one? And then Michael suddenly found that little bit that just went, of which I have to admit, I don't remember when we were doing it live. And uh, we found when you closed your eyes, it sounded a bit like a muted trumpet. And then we thought, actually, it sounds a little bit almost scar. And uh, so then we started kind of building up beats to go with a kind of, you know, like a scar. And uh, and that's kind of everything just fitted in place. And uh, and uh, uh, again, uh, the guy, uh, similar, we used um, uh, Luis Camacho on guitar that we recorded in uh, Colombia, mm. uh, in Cartagena, on another track, but he fitted beautifully on this. And, uh, and um, yeah. It would be good to hear a little bit from uh, Mas Gondrong. Uh, I think uh, the question earlier uh, that Alex already responded, uh, uh, and also Michael. Uh, uh, Mas Gondrong, tadi aku yeah. tanya sedikit soal... Uh, mm melihat uh, perspektif uh, Addictive TV dari kacamata musisi ya. ya. Uh, karena uh, apa melihat outcome yang dihasilkan itu pasti beda dengan biasanya kita membuat komposisi dalam bentuk uh, ensemble ya artinya. Ya. Berhubungan dengan fisikalitas langsung berinteraksi hmm. ya. Uh, nah, kalau menurut Mas Gondrong dari kacamata sebagai uh, pemain gitu ya uh, dan juga komposer Uh, hasil akhirnya ter- mengejutkan atau enggak <laughs> dari proses okay. ya jadi mm. dalam kreatif prosesnya itu selama misalkan mm. Graham merekam ya yeah. ya yeah, 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 yeah. uh, dan yeah. uh, untuk hasil akhirnya itu menurut Mas Gondrong uh, sesuai yeah. harapan atau itu mengejutkan atau gimana gitu ya kurang jadi, lebih itu tadi jadi apa namanya ketika uh, Graham datang ke rumah Majar Sari itu uh, Menurut saya yang saya ber, ber latar belakang musik tradisional uh, dan mengembangkan musik tradisional dan biasanya konser uh, uh, apa namanya konser secara uh, ketemu langsung dengan musisi 
ketika kedatangan Graham itu ah ini menarik orang ini gila uh, mendatangi musisi seluruh dunia dan merekamnya dan membuat satu komposisi dan yang saya mainkan benar-benar disuruh bebas improv dan kemudian setelah diolah sama dia dimasak oleh Graham uh, mengejutkan sekali itu di luar dugaan saya ternyata hasilnya di luar dugaan dan saya senang sekali itu uh, Graham seperti uh, apa ya koki yang yang paham benar apa bahan-bahan yang di, dikumpulkannya dan yang satu hal lagi setelah itu covid jadi Graham sudah mendahului pro- program-program yang akan terjadi uh, kemudian itu mas oke okay. oh interesting so you know um, you'll have to translate <laughs> Gon Gun said that uh, Graham is crazy in a good way. <laughs> so it's a cra- crazy man came for uh, through solo to Bajarsari, and you know, uh, being able to gather you know musicians, you know, humans from you know all over the world, and you know, I asked Gon Trung about how he see the process and also the end result of it, and you know, he's he's of of course he was surprised, you know, to see exactly. how his improvisation. Uh, to become, you know, a new composition that probably he wouldn't imagine, you know. So he's, you know, obviously he's probably wasn't expecting much, but you know, <laughs> and but you know, he's a surprise. And he said that you know, you're like a master chef, you know, a uh, master chef that knows his ingredients really well, uh, and being able to create a nice dish, you know, in that sense. Uh, I guess the only alteration I would make to that is it, it's more like we're we're not. We're chefs, but we don't know what the ingredients is until we are making the meal. So it's like we open up the refrigerator and we go, hmm, okay, we have a carrot and, a, <laughs> and some noodles and, and then we have to make up a, an, you know, an amazing meal. It's I'm not going yeah. yeah. to inter- interfere there and say, sure, sure. actually, Graham is a very good chef in the, in the sense that he knows exactly what is in his fridge. So, so he'll he'll play like he'll come back from somewhere and say, oh, "I've recorded these amazing things," and he'll play mm. me something. And yeah. then while he's playing it, he'll go, "Huh, this that I get." I'm thinking there was this one guy that we recorded eight <laughs> years ago in this place, and it was this instrument. Maybe this will fit. And he'll go and dish it out from his his archives, and he'll he'll send it to me and go. And while he's playing me that, he'll go. <laughs> Actually, this also reminds me of this other thing that I recorded five years ago in this place. And then he'll go and do that. <laughs> so there is, he's, he's underselling himself. He does definitely do a lot of it. Like he knows exactly what's in I wonder now to check out uh, Graham's fridge now. I'll probably have some spices from from East Java. Lots of them. Already in there. Yeah. I mean, something we haven't sampled yet. Uh, that was uh, a really good instrument it was um, uh, we recorded the chuk and the chak that, that plays in kind of kronkong music of, uh, of yeah. yeah that we were really surprised about that the whole idea is that, that, that this music is only a few hundred years old and, and kind of was a blend of Portuguese from the Portuguese sailors uh, who brought like the small little kind of timple kind of guitars of which yes. developed and became a three string and a four string and uh, that that's just it kind of For us, it was one of the first times where you genuinely in front of you see how music is created, uh, not created, has, has influenced other music mm-hmm. around the world and has blended and over hundreds of years changes. Because mm-hmm. we, we were taken to a concert on the first night we were in uh, Solo City. And that's why and we thought, uh, wow, this music sounds very Latin. And uh, mm-hmm. it's kind of, we thought this is strange for, for Indonesia. And then we went and spoke to the band And they explained and they said, no, no, it's all because uh, a few hundred years ago in the 16th century with the Portuguese sailors, mm-hmm. uh, many of them stayed and some they sold the instruments and then they started playing together. And, and then th- this music developed. And, uh, and so, yeah, we recorded some of the band while we were there. But it was, um, so yeah, yeah. In our Graham, to, um, sedikit cerita crazy. pengalaman dia. Pertama mm-hmm. kali dengerin keroncong, Mas. Ya, yeah, gitu loh. Uh, agak sedikit kaget dengan bagaimana... Ternyata ada unsur-unsur dari luar juga ya, kayak Portugis yeah. salah satunya. Portugis, gitu. yeah. mm-hmm. Mau nambah boleh? Oh boleh boleh. Asking, so, uh, do you think live performance is still important in the future, 
uh, especially to perform on stage, because I heard about 5G technology will provide a medium to have collaboration from all corners of the world via the internet. What do yeah. you think? Um, uh, sorry, um, Graham. Uh, uh, Gun Gun wants to just say, okay. continuing a little bit, I think, after that. Uh, um, Jadi, hmm. yeah. setelah, apa namanya, setelah Graham pulang, uh, di Solo, uh, di, di dunia, di Solo, di Indonesia, kan uh, lockdown itu. Terus setelah itu ada uh, new normal, uh, setelah itu ada konser uh, bantuan dari pemerintah dan saya memainkan uh, hasil karya dari uh, apa adiktif TV yang uh, kami ada di situ, saya minta dan saya kolaborasikan lagi dengan gamelan uh, dan uh, live. Jadi uh, apa namanya hmm. diputar dan, dan saya main live. Tapi sayang hasilnya di YouTube kurang bagus. Tapi waktu hmm. itu Graham juga tak suruh melihat. Artinya cara-cara Graham coba saya respon ulang dengan dengan mencoba mengolaborasikan lagi dengan live. Gitu. Hmm. Itu menarik okay, di, sini, okay. di sini. Waktu itu di Solo saya juga cerita bahwa Graham sudah memulai apa kerja kerja yang yang sekarang dilakukan. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Yeah. Oke. Okay. Um, so he uh, mentioned earlier, which I forgot also about the fact that uh, you know. Uh, and the new normal isn't really new normal for addictive TV because you have started this project you know way long before you know this isolation that we are in now um, I think later it could explain a little bit probably what's elements in there that perhaps new in this COVID era but also you mentioned about that uh, work that uh, you collaborated together in solo uh, Gun Gun actually uh, uh, performed it again uh, with the some of the musician in solo uh, but he wasn't quite happy with the result of the recording uh, that wasn't uh, very good so uh, so that's why he wanted to ask you uh, what's wrong with it and also the way he actually remaking that the music of that is also doing it live with the musician there in solo to re trying to recreate that again uh, that's all he's saying yeah Yeah, no, no. I, I, I think what he was doing is very much uh, the same thing of when we perform uh, live, that the other people are performing with us, if that makes sense. But um, before I, in fact, I'll answer that a bit more. But can I, sure, sure. Alex, before, because Alex has to leave. In about, You're right. You're right. Thank you for reminding me that also. Yes. And so uh, yeah. I, I, I'll just, I'll pass over to Alex because he quite importantly needs to speak about his uh, particular kind of guitars and what he adds. And also, it's important. It's important to address a question from Boggs, right? Earlier, tempo, and you know, Alex has the answer for us. I think. Yes, go for Alex. Yes. So the, yes, so this is typically typically um, a fretless guitar. Um, this is a seven string uh, guitar. So uh, originally, I had only six strings, but, um, but because I was working with Addictive TV and they really needed a bass, um, much bassy sound sometimes. So I had the idea to put, to use the seven strings. And then I, I, I went further in the project and now I have a eight strings, which is like fulfill every, like uh, uh, that, that fulfills all the scales because you can do very deep in the bass and you can still go very high uh, in the treble. So uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's really amazing because that project, That, there you see, this is uh, the eight mm. string, which is um, a stock guitar. So um, uh, um, I've been working with Mathieu, which is a very uh, famous craftsman in, in, in France. And he's really a gifted um, man. And he, he could, he also he had the, um, the cleverness to understand my, my project and what I really wanted. So he took out the, the frets and basically He glued a new um, a new fingerboard made of ebony, which is very hard because otherwise, by playing uh, the guitar, you would just uh, end up uh, digging the fingerboard. So yes, so this is uh, this is beautiful. They had to order this special wood because normally it doesn't exist on that uh, particular um, width because no, it's even uh, wider than for double bass. <laughs> you see. <laughs> Because usually it works with a lot of double bass and, and cellos. It does repairs and, and construction. So this is uh, the electronics uh, I had uh, built for the, the special guitar. 
because the uh, fretted guitar is very sensitive and you so you need like very like I, I put two batteries to have a, a lot of uh, headroom and to have all the the clarity that you can uh, you can expect from that kind of instrument yes yeah, so this is Matthew, yeah, Matthew. And <laughs> so, <Great>. hi Matthew <laughs> Yeah, I warned him, so he will watch it on YouTube afterwards. Uh, so yeah, and so, so very good collaboration with uh, this uh, amazing guy. <laughs> Explain about the, uh, the the travel, uh, the travel guitar, because we had a gig. Oh yes, before, so and we there had, was no way of taking the full guitar. So, so sometimes we had, we, we had trouble we had trouble in traveling. So I, I had the idea to make a very very small uh, guitar. So basically, it was a glued. Uh, guitar that had a glued neck and the idea was to take out the neck to make like a, a collapsible guitar so this the, yes so you see the stock guitar on the left and on the right is the, the neck that have been taken out so this this is the new fingerboard on the left you see and um, so uh, and then on the right is you glue it on the top of the old one but you flattened the, the former one before, so you have a perfect, um, yeah, so that's the beautiful fingerboard. And then back to the electronics, so I have to redo the electronics again. So you see now he has uh, bolts, and uh, so you can take out the bolts and to collapse the guitar. That's what I think was the cleverest, is the, the way you can undo the bolts and put the neck in and, uh, and you know, collapse it. Yeah, so of interest. You, you end up on the, which is very small stuff like that. Uh, but it, it worked and it was like a mad project, but uh, it worked for Morocco. We could go on a, with a hand luggage. And like, uh, yeah, so and on stage. So, yeah, and it sounds beautiful. So thanks again to Mathieu. It, it, it <laughs> right. did. It was incredible to be able to take a guitar hand luggage that it could just collapse down was, was great. So I'm just going to leave um, soon. I just wanted to um, to play you a little bit of, um, of the fretless guitar before going, and just yes, to explain you that uh, yeah, the advantage to have a fretless guitar is because all those weird instruments uh, that um, Graham talked about and Michael and also Moff, um, they are tuned in a very different way that uh, here in Europe. So sometimes it's not quite tuned, etc. So the fretless guitar really makes its way. Um, in between the temperamental uh, music world and the non one. So I'm just going to show that. So, oops. Yeah. So this is the eight, uh, the eight strings. We can go very deep. And the things that you can go out of tune is when you're doing that. And suddenly you want to go out of tune. I'm back in tune. <laughs> Right. Yay. Very yeah. nice. It makes me want to take my frets off now. <laughs> That's a good win. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Alex is a fretless guitarist in two ways. He, he, as well as his guitar, he never frets. <laughs> Alex is fretless. So he's, yeah, he's always calm and, you know. <laughs> Sorry, that was a very bad joke. Sorry. I know you do always your jokes. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was talking so about that with Francoise. Tomorrow we'll do some jokes. You will see. <laughs> <laughs> so the guitar uh, uh, functions is becoming almost like a sitar, right? Uh, in a way that the sitar is more flexible to play with uh, almost all instruments. Uh, I guess, yeah, in some ways, very much so. I mean, when we performed with, uh, you mentioned him earlier, Baluji Shrivastav, who performed last night at your festival, he's performed with us uh, quite a number of times on the project. And yeah, he, he, he can just easily keep up with anything. It, you know, it doesn't seem to matter what key it's in, he can adjust and, uh, you know, instantly. And uh, yeah. In fact, because we did a tour 
we toured with him on uh, where we were working on his project. Uh, we toured in India uh, two two years ago now, and uh, yeah, which is why when we were in India, we recorded uh, a number of the musicians when we were there, and uh, and then we returned yeah. last year and we went back to India, uh, but that was separate. But of recorded, course, recorded more musicians while there. In fact, pretty much everywhere we go, uh, we'll record musicians. Yeah, fantastic. Um, Should we address the question from Box about the live performance? Sure. Uh, I was afraid uh, that uh, Alex already has to go. Uh, so uh, probably we'll go in five minutes. <laughs> okay. okay, okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay, uh, just looking at the time. Uh, I've, I've, got about, I've got about 15 minute, minutes as well. Okay. Uh, you want to start with answering then, if you've got uh, something on your mind? What is that? Do you think live performance is still important in the future? Because uh, I heard about 5G technology will provide a medium to have It's basically about collaborating. Yes, I think there will be, personally, I think there'll be a lot more collaborating uh, when um, uh, the internet is far more up to speed, as I say. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think more people will. Because uh, I mean, obviously, at the moment, it's quite difficult to have real kind of collaboration, live collaboration in that sense, because of latency and, 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 and lag. But um, I think that, um, I think it will become more so. But I think also though, getting back to what Alex was saying earlier about the sort of the analog kind of organic world, I think people do want to be together and they like to have that shared experience of being somewhere where somebody's performing music. Even though performing kind of online can be great, uh, it, it's, it's just not the same as performing with an audience it's and, really uh, true because I, I think we've been deprived of our, our common some of our, our common senses you know mm. like the smells uh, smell i can I, I think about smell about gigs but <laughs> uh, yeah that kind of stuff you know that that's why um when the pandemic will be over it, 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 you will i think you will see you will never see as many gigs as there will be it will be amazing Hopefully. i think you think so no, because there is really people want, re they really yes, and um, and because when you're deprived of, if you're deprived of chocolate of two two uh, two uh, a time very long, then they want to go and eat your chocolate, you know, that kind of the thing, and that's really like I mean people have been deprived of social life, etc. And a gig is really um, an experience for uh, audio um, visuals, but also you meet people for real, you see, so it's. Uh, and uh, humanity have been playing music for like always so uh, and together also but before it used to be uh, around a small fire camp and now it's through internet because of the pandemic but as soon as it's and it's over i think it uh, yes there will, there will be a lot of, uh, of gigs. music has always been something that brings people together you know whether it's you know whether it's religious or within a community uh, or, or in, in the way that kind of music culture is now, it's always been about bringing people together. So I think Alex is right that when when the time is right, it needs to happen again. And in all over Europe, the music industry is pretty much closed, you know, and in America and pretty much around the world. And so in that sense, people are waiting for festivals. They're waiting exactly uh, after uh, the well, the first Great War, for instance. You, you had the, the year twenties, and it was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, people the, like yeah, the they really just, just just wanted to have fun to go out and and to, mm. to, to live a good life you know because they knew life is precious <laughs> especially uh, yeah I, I i i would like to add to that and say that actually what what we may end up getting would be an explosion of live events but also then an explosion of those live events being shared online so that we can because now that we've gotten used to accessing things online in that way you'll probably end up with say uh you know a festival like womad having like an online presence at the same time as the the actual thing so you'll you'll you'll, you'll probably end up with people buying like the online ticket because they're in 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 china or in japan somewhere or in france yeah but they still want to be part of it so you'll end up with people in the place and you'll end up with a few thousand people online accessing it, and maybe yeah, even and, and, and I was talking with with Françoise. Yeah, maybe we, you will have kind of a, some live promotion just before the gig, for instance, or the day after before. You see, Michael. Yeah, that, that kind of thing that you can't do now. But uh, I think this will replace the trailers and that kind of stuff. Or uh, you know, probably 
I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the, 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 okay, guys, I must you, leave. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Alex. Okay, Alex. It has been very nice. Thank, Thank you, you Alex. for organizing, uh, organizing Thank everything. You. And and take care of you all. Okay. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks. But I think yeah. that 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 in in the future, I think that even conferences will similarly they will become like a hybrid. I think that people will always, you know, because it's you know it's proven the way that you can have panel talks and you know like we are doing now. And so I think it opens the scope out more because we've done a lot of panel talks and been at conferences where sometimes you know it's. It, 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 it's either too expensive for people to fly you to somewhere or something. And I think that, that you will see live events also having kind of online panels and everything I think will be a, a, a hybrid. I don't think there's suddenly going to be a return back to everything being live and, and everything online will stop. <laughs> I think it, it will be both. Hmm. I think uh, if I may add a little bit uh, uh, on that uh, topic, I think it's a very interesting uh, in relation to the life experience, I think, of addictive TV, um, even before this normal era. Uh, you know, I've, I've never been in, in the uh, live performance myself, uh, but I could only imagine, you know, what it's like to be, you know, in the audience, you know, during um, addictive TV performance. And, and I think, personally, that's already contributing to... Uh, you know, this new model of life experience, you know, that, uh, you know, everybody is, is searching, you know, uh, to confront these challenges, uh, Graham. Uh, and, um, you know, well, especially we... having, you know, the intersubjective relationship with the musicians, you know, that you meet them in persons, you know, and you projected them on the screens, you know, and you have live musicians on the stage, you know, with you doing some live sampling at the same time, you know, that's already kind of, you know, having three layers, you know, of, of, of experience in there. And you also broadcasting through YouTube. So, you know, and I think, you know, that's why, you know, uh, we bring addictive TV here. I think you guys are already, you know, on its way to answering, you know, this concern we have towards the future, you know? Well, I think our shows are always about wanting to take people and take the audience somewhere. Because I, I just think particularly that, that when you work with, with images as well and video, it can take you so much more to places than just the music on its own. I think that when you can see the music, uh, I, I think somehow it, it kind of does more to your brain than, um, you know, I mean, <laughs> for many years, people have always said, and just listen to music but I always think no no open your eyes and uh, you know sort of you know, let a thousand volts go through your eyes and, and, and be taken somewhere I mean it's kind of it's like a cross between cinema and and, uh, and, and a live concert I mean in, in many ways it's live cinema and that goes for not just orchestra of samples it's the other show as well when uh, you know we've cut up movies and done mashups and you know and, and it, it's kind of like um, we would always say that if you had like a, a blender, getting back to the, the analogies of the kitchen, if you if you took Netflix and you put it in a blender and, you know, that that's kind of, you know, what our other show would be like. It's like completely crazy. And sometimes after an hour, people's brains are fried and they can't watch much more of it. But that's why with orchestra samples, it's much more kind of, you know, it's, it's uh, easier on, on, on the brain. Mm. But um, it's, I'm yeah. Gonna... I'm going to interject to add something as well, but also because okay. I, I really need to go. Um, I really, really need to go. But I just wanted to say, from like a um, fr fr from a, a scientific perspective, about how uh, memory and and um, and how, how we connect with things. There's a very strong um, ha having that visual uh, element where you can see the people playing um really um sort of it, it makes it conducive to feelings of connection so i agree with like what what you're saying Graham. like but there's also there's a, a, a lot of research it just so happens that i've been looking at a lot of research at the moment regarding this and a lot of research research, research sort of points towards um 
when you're able to observe someone doing something, anything, even the simplest thing, but especially with music, you a little bit of it you embody within yourself. So it really adds to that togetherness. Um, you know, it really promotes that togetherness. And I think the, which is at the heart of orchestra of samples to bring things that wouldn't be together together and then giving that experience to people in a, in a life setting where they can see all those different places and different people playing together. It's like so many levels of togetherness that it, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's really powerful. Um, I never looked at it in that way. All the years we've been making this, I never looked at it. I guess. I know. Well, I know. That, when you study kind of the psychology of music, as you currently are for your PhD, I guess you'll discover that kind of thing. Yeah, I suppose I've never really looked at it. That sense that, that, that what the images and the video adds to the music is that by just seeing it, you comprehend it, I guess, more differently. Yeah, and yeah. differently than just hearing music on its own. Yeah, yeah because when, you, when you've just got the sound, I mean, not, not, to, not to discount the sound at all, but it's... It's uh, when you've just got the sound, it, 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 you, you connect to it from your own personal experience. Mm -hmm. So you bring up your, you know, your, your own sort of connections to it. But when you see it, it gives you that little bit of context mm -hmm. and allows you to connect specifically with the context of that instrument or the context of that, the cultural connotations behind an instrument. You see something played in India, you feel a connection to that. So there's, it's, there's a lot of power there that is still unexplored. Um, I guess yeah. without, that's why I guess over the last, you know, hundred years that with the invention of, of recorded music, live music still exists. In other words, it didn't, you know, there, like so many things when film came along, people thought, oh, you know, theatre is going to die because there's film. With photography, oh, you know, painting is going to die because people can just take photos. And I guess people never think of it in that way that I guess, of course, as soon as you've had recorded music, people probably thought, oh, no, you know, no one will want to see live musicians anymore because you can only you can just listen to it. But of course, no, people without probably going into the kind of intricacies of the psychology of it, people just want to be connected to the musicians they see performing on a stage. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think, yeah, it definitely promotes more togetherness and more connection and more empathy and more um yeah more desire to be a part of it you know yeah um, i really really need to go i'm gonna have to bid you all farewell okay <laughs> we're all yeah. dropping like flies now uh -huh. um but yeah thank you for uh for, for for inviting me and for being a part of this i'm looking forward to watching the rest of it <laughs> thank you Later thank on. you michael thank you, have, a, have, have a nice day have a good day, everyone. I will see yeah. you soon. Enjoy the lecture. <laughs> well, this you know has been a very nice uh, discussion. Um, we are already uh, going over the time. Uh, Ooh, yeah. and, Any uh, more questions? Yes. I already asked everybody if they want to ask anything. Um, as we know that uh, Mas Gondrong is also uh, is uh, having also an event tonight. Uh, yeah. at uh, 8 o'clock uh, Bukan Musik Biasa seri 79 79 yeah. series already yeah. 13 uh, tahun sudah it's 13, 13 years <laughs> <laughs> and it will be starting uh, in just over 2 hours um, 2 hours yeah um, well, Gong Gong are you performing tonight at Banjasari House? Uh, no uh, saya main di uh, Taman Budaya mas di apa di Teater Arena tidak di Oh, yes, sorry. He's, he's at Taman Budaya uh, for tonight's ah, okay. event and he's, yeah. he's just organizing, not performing. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. For the audience who are watching, you know, where, where uh, Gongrong is now you know, in Ruma Banjasari, this is where we recorded him and the other musicians last year when we were in, uh, in Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, please check out uh, Orchestra of Samples uh, yeah. website. Uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> As Ram said, that you know, it's an archive, you know, of you know, and there different are some collections. Samples. Um, if people want, there are samples on our site that they can download themselves, and uh, they can make their own mixes with. Yes, that's very interactive. You could uh, uh, 
get involved in the process. Uh, There's a new message from somebody I can see. Hold on, see if somebody's asking something. You say unless, um, uh, oh no, someone's just going, wow. <laughs> 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 uh, maybe maybe he just saw the website. Uh, there's also the ah, okay, yeah. the recent uh, inter interviews and uh, uh, in, memories in fact, of uh, after yeah. the after this session finishes. Uh, after this session finishes, um, in fact, me and uh, me and Stephen, we are going to spend the rest of the day working together uh, on a on a new track where we have sampled an unbelievable sax saxophone player that we recorded in the Czech Republic. Uh, with um, uh, with a, a drummer we recorded in Russia, in uh, St. Petersburg, many, right. many years ago. So, uh, yeah. What else is in this track? I can't, I can't remember now that we're working on. Um, I think that's it at the moment. Oh, you're muted. Still on mute. Yeah, there's, there's a few other little ideas I think we're trying to fit in at the moment. I'm not sure which ones are going to marry in together properly which ones will stay and which will go mm. so yeah we shouldn't shouldn't mention give up false hope because we have said that before to people we've we've written to musicians and said hey we've sampled you for this track it's really really good and then in the end it doesn't quite work and so we have to then drop them and they say oh where's that track that, that you said that i'm in and then we said oh actually we had to change it so so it's best not to tell people now when we finish <laughs> well thank you francois for uh giving all the, uh, in the chat box, you can yes, yeah. go directly to, yeah. Yeah, I posted some, some links uh, in the chat box, but also as Graham mentioned on the website of draftsamples.com, there's loads of resources information. Um, mm. And also we will be doing more uh, remix workshops and Zoom session in the future. Um, in the UK, we are planning to film more musicians. So creating more work this year. So to keep, creative and keep connected with uh, with the world and the musical uh, world so yeah we've been Fantastic. fortunate enough we've been fortunate enough uh, to just receive some funding uh, to continue more production uh, of the project uh, that we applied for to, to the arts council in the uk uh, which was great and so it enables us to to film more musicians make more work and to run some uh, some workshops and so um so yeah we'll be doing that this year so if anyone wants to, to know what's happening, yeah, just either uh, drop a, a message to us, uh, sign up to our newsletter, uh, or join us on our Facebook page. And Francoise will always, you know, post and let people know. And the Facebook happening. page is Addictive TV. So yeah, facebook.com forward slash just Addictive TV. Great. And hopefully, as described by the UNESCO, uh, most uh, the magazine is a musical journey without borders and you know this is you know very yes. in line with uh, what sacred rhythm and also the sacred bridge uh, you know has been uh, confronting over the last 20 years uh, and you know i'm very happy that we are connected here uh, but for uh, us that was we, we funny thing is that we we've started to be connected in the era of COVID, and also COVID. with gondrom also it's uh, it's a fantastic uh, connection uh, that finally, you know, we can... But we did come to a few of your concerts in London. Yes. <laughs> That's but, right. Uh, no, the, uh, we, we felt with uh, the um, UNESCO uh, connection, it, it very much felt like a, an endorsement of, of the project of what we were doing, because last year uh, it was an honour to be asked that just before the, the, the UK, on the la uh, it was like two days before the last official day that the UK left, the European Union, uh, because of Brexit, the uh, we were booked <laughs> to, to, to perform in Paris at the Pompidou Center. And the Pompidou Center were doing this whole project about breaking down borders and, and the world coming together, you know, in a time of just before the pandemic, strangely enough, mm. about, about collaborating and that more people should collaborate. And because of Brexit, they wanted uh, a, a UK based artist and, and British artist to perform in France, but with a very international project. And so we, we performed it and, uh, and we didn't know that in the audience, there was somebody from UNESCO and, uh, and they, they came up to us and they said this project, they didn't know of it. And they said it was amazing and uh, they really, really loved it. And that could we write uh, an article for them because they were launching a magazine. So I don't know if Francoise has the uh, article, if you wanna post a link Francoise. 
And, I think uh, I, I posted it already, you know. Just oh, you have? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Boo Boo. So, the yeah, they asked us to explain the, the, the project and the history of the project and the whole idea of music yeah. without borders. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's what we wrote. And um, the, the most frustrating thing was they asked us to perform at the headquarters of UNESCO uh, for the launch of the magazine, but it had to be cancelled because it was in uh, June, right in the, in the middle of the pandemic and lockdown. So it all had to be cancelled, which was a real shame. Mm. But they launched the magazine anyway and the article's online. And, fantastic, uh, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. thank you for, you know, Graham, Francois, for sharing this, you know, very beautiful project. Uh, and I think more and more people should know about it, uh, without doubt. Uh, and, you know, just thank, thank you. you for, you know, opening your, you know, yeah. your heart and, you know, the doors to Indonesia and, you know, all of our audience in here. And, you yes. know, uh, thank hopefully, you very much. hopefully thank we you can very have much. you both here and in solo with Mas Gondrong again in the, in the near future. Yes, no, we, we want to come back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We'll, we'll keep in I touch, obviously. To, uh, I want to buy some more Indonesian shirts. <laughs> I, I bought this shirt in Indonesia. <laughs> yeah. Um, Gong, Gong, Gong knows all of the best places to buy shirts. You mean? Ah, Gondrong, so, Gondrong knows. Uh, someone saying nice batik. Thank you. Oh, nice batik, yeah. <laughs> Some of nanti, the batik you find. Nanti di Clever, Mas. Oh, what's he say? He's going to find it for you in, ah, okay. in Clever, yeah. <laughs> so many of the batik are like amazing and beautiful, and some of them are like uh, they're like a very bad headache. <laughs> so it's like trying to find the right batik that, that looks really good. Yeah. And don't forget, um, everyone, um, tomorrow will be the presentation day uh, for. Uh, orchestra of sample. Yes, uh, to see the online performance tomorrow. Yeah. And yeah, tomorrow is also fire. is part of the closing gong of the mm. homecoming. So we have come this far. It's uh, tomorrow is exactly one month since we started this project. Uh, and tomorrow we have a series of lineup and uh, orchestra of samples will be closing. On the day, and we'll begin with another dialogue, an extension dialogue of immunity in community, which uh, hopefully of all of you we can also join that. Uh, um, and we have Dr. Chin Mei Moon Jae and uh, Jonathan Page from the Nantian Institute and from the UK will share you about the importance of immunity uh, and the impact uh, and how stress can you know uh, impact our daily life in this COVID times. Uh, so please join tomorrow if you can, and it will follow by the performance. Uh, and on the 31st, um, it will be the final closing. Uh, we'll be doing something special via Zoom uh, at 4 p.m. Jakarta time. So we're inviting all participants uh, to take part in it. Uh, and again, we'll follow by uh, a long uh, session of performance after that. So, okay, I think uh, we're... Uh, can end the dialogue for today. Yes. Uh, there's so lo lots of information to digest. Uh, uh, thank you, Stephen. Uh, thank you, Mas Gon Gon. Uh, sama -sama. Terima kasih. Also, thank you, semua. Thank and you. Alex, who's not here, uh, and Michael, who just left also, Graham, uh, and Mas Oi, who's behind the Zoom, who's the technical <laughs> hosting for today's dialogue. Uh, and of course, all the volunteers. Uh, of, of homecoming uh, in Bali, in Jakarta, mm. uh, and all our partners, musicians that have made this event uh, become possible. So, you know, it's been a wonderful and enriching journey for all of us. Uh, no, it's been great. Thank you. Thank you for asking us. So stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you very soon. Definitely. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Okay. Maybe we'll take, should we take okay. a picture? One picture? Okay. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> Let's take a picture. Maybe if everyone wants to turn the camera on, then they're welcome to. Okay. Uh, but if not, then... Uh, I think many people want to hide. It's okay. Oh, there's, 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 yeah. Hello, Mas Agus. Hello. Selamat datang, Boga. Uh, <laughs> that box looks like. Who likes batik yeah. shirts? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Mas Oi will take, take it for us. Hope he's still there. Oh, there you go. Oh, <laughs> Go on, there you go. Okay. Okay. Magic. One, two, three. Fantastic.
Gong <laughs> Gong Gong is already firing up for tonight. Bukan musik biasa. So no, good luck for tonight's show, Gong Gong. <laughs> yeah. Good luck, Gong Gong, and thank you again for for joining this talk. Oh yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being part of our project as well. And okay. Thank you for calling me crazy because I am. <laughs> Take care, everybody. See you. Bye bye. bye. Enjoy the show tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs>